Hi, my name is Michael Roberts. Uh, I wanted to do this video to say a little bit more about the uh, cameras and the equipment I use. I choose to use vintage cameras and equipment. Um, cameras and equipment that were made 1940s um, all the way back to the 1890s. And uh, there's a reason for this. Uh, one is uh, the 1890s up to maybe the 1930s were kind of the heyday of Amer American craftsmanship. And there's a lot of these cameras that were made. Uh, photography for the masses really got started in the 1890s along with the bicycle craze. And so during this time, there's uh, you know, hundreds, thousands of, of people employed in the camera making industry. And, th and it was also, a, as I said, a, a high time for American craftsmanship. So for example, this camera that was made by the Rochester Optical Company in 1898, it features um, American mahogany, uh, which you can't even get anymore, uh, brass fittings, and it's truly a work of, of beauty and craftsmanship all by itself. So uh, I buy vintage cameras, I restore them, and I use them, and I sell them to other photographers so they can make use of them and uh, put these, these cameras that still you know, have uh, you know, wonderful working life and uh, can make wonderful uh, objects of art in the right hands uh, back, back into production, back into use as they were intended to be. Uh, the cameras originally were made with leather bellows uh, using uh, Moroccan leather. Leather doesn't tend to hold up after 100 years or so uh, unless it's been carefully preserved. So a lot of the leather bellows have dried, cracked, and so forth and have to be re replaced. Uh, sometimes the wood has to be, um, you know, the lacquer has to be removed, sand, the wood sanded down, refinished, and I do that. Back in the 1890s, um, there were a lot of different camera manufacturers, just like if you remember a few years ago with uh, computers and, and other new technology. And so there were no standardized uh, formats for film holders and uh, the backs of the cameras where the film holders go in. So that came a little bit later with the shakeout in the industry. And so some of these older models that were made in the 1890s and 1910s and 19 aughts, uh, I have to modify the backs so that they can accept modern film holders. Um, so I've learned to do sort of my own woodworking and crafting and uh, really enjoy that part of it as well. This tripod was an original Reese tripod that was made in the motion, uh, by uh, some the Reese brothers who worked in the uh, motion picture industry in the 1930s. And it was made to hold large 8x10 cameras to uh, make still photographs on the motion picture sets so that when they finished for the day and they came back, they could uh, look at the pictures of how the set was when they were last filming a scene, get everything uh, back exactly the way it was, so they could start filming again. So they needed lots of still pictures on the motion picture sets, not only for the sets, but for the costumes and uh, so forth. So this, this tripod uh, dates from the 1930s and uh, the camera from the 1890s. Um, both um, still in perfect working order. And uh, as I said, this has been my primary camera setup for the last 10 years. Uh, the camera itself uh, is very simple. Uh, there is, um, it's simply an empty box. There's a lens that goes on the front and the lens is, has a uh, shutter that is all manually operated. So you set the aperture or the opening that the light will pass through by hand. You set the shutter speed by hand. Once the, once the settings have been made, uh, you can use a cable release that will screw into the shutter and trip the shutter and um, that will cause light to pass through and reach the film that's in the rear of the camera. So let me turn this around. Let me see, let me give you a picture of the camera from the side. Uh, the bellows uh, have this, you know, um, unique quality to them where they're folded and they can expand and contract. And that's because the lenses are all fixed focal length lenses. There are no zoom lenses uh, in analog photography, or at least not from uh, the, the 1890s. So uh, with every different lens that has a different focal length, you can extend the camera, the, the front of the camera forward or backward so to bring your subject into focus. The rear of the camera is where the uh, thumb holder goes, 
and it is a reversible back so that you can take a photo in landscape mode or you can reverse it to take it in portrait mode and you can see the camera is just an empty box so the purpose is to block out light between the lens and the film. The back is really interesting. It has springs on it uh, so that you can slip the film holder uh, in and the springs will hold the film holder into place. Uh, you might notice that the glass here is frosted and that's so when you open up the lens you can see your subject on the lens while you're composing to compose and focus. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. It's simple as far as that goes. What's not simple about it is the fact that nothing is automatic and as I've learned and every other large format and ultra large format photographer knows, there's a hundred ways to screw up a photograph. Um, and I've probably done all of them. Um, I'm a self-taught photographer and self-taught artist and so one of the ways we learn is by making mistakes. So I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, what you try to do over time is you know, increase your, increase your batting average, uh, not keep making the same mistakes over and over. Um, what else can I tell you about this camera? Um, it looks heavy and it is relatively heavy. The camera itself is fairly lightweight. It only weighs about 10 pounds. Uh, it's very lightweight for an ultra large format camera. They usually run about 20 pounds. Uh, the lenses are about two or three pounds. The tripod is heavy. The tripod is about nine pounds. It has a steel head that is a tilting head uh, and swivels and that weighs another five pounds. Uh, the film holders weigh about three pounds each. So it's not uncommon with uh, all the gear uh, that goes along with this camera uh, for me to have about 40 or 50 pounds of gear that I'm hauling around uh, on trails, wherever I'm going, viewpoints, uh, to be able to make the photographs I make. Uh, so you have to be in good shape. Uh, I live in the Rocky Mountains. I live at an elevation of 9,000 feet in Wonderview, Colorado. Uh, the el living at this elevation by itself tends to keep you in shape. Hiking on trails uh, from 10,000 to 12,000 feet with 40 to 50 pounds, that will keep you in shape too. Um, but uh, that's a, just another part of the challenge and it's something I enjoy doing and it makes the production of the art and the realization of the art that much more satisfying. So, Thank you for uh, watching, and if you have any questions about my process, uh, feel free to contact me, send me an email, and uh, I'll be happy to share more about that. Thank you.